Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com and I think it's about time for another shop update. Before I get started on that, uh, you know I've had several questions about my channel name, MyHeap. And why is it called MyHeap? Well, I just to clarify, and maybe for those that might be interested, I don't know. I'm a computer guy by trade, right? That's, uh, that's what I do. I'm a network, uh, I put together networks, uh, wide area services, server services, stuff like that, right? And uh, so, in computer terminology, um, when you, if you were a programmer, you have two types of memory, right? You have the working memory, and then you have what's called heap memory, right? So when a program is doing something and it finds that it needs more memory, and um, it's not going to use something for a while, it puts that stuff on the heap, right? So heap memory is like for longer term storage for a running program, right? Don't, don't confuse it with a disk. So when I very first started my website, um, I don't even know how many years ago now, it's been quite a few years ago, uh, I called it my heap or kind of like my memory stack, right? So it was a place for me to put uh, stuff that I wanted to be able to access again from anywhere and share with other people. So that's the origins of my heap and it's just kind of stuck. So if I've confused any of you guys by my crazy uh, channel name, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so anyway, I have a few things that I want to share with you. I've got um, uh, some new shop tools and I've got some uh, user uh, uh, subscriber gifts and stuff that I want to show and some tool organization. So let me bring the camera over here to the bench and let's get started. So the first thing I want to start with is a viewer gift. Uh, remember my last shop update video where I was showing off the Christmas gifts and stuff that I got and I was complaining that, you know, there's nowhere uh, really to buy a metric rule, especially one that starts at the end of the rule or the scale. And uh, so uh, Patrick, my friend in Belgium uh, and subscriber, was kind enough to say, hey, uh, I'll, I'll send you some metric rules, right? And so he sent me <clears throat> two 150 uh, millimeter rules or equivalent six inch rules. He sent me a uh, 300 millimeter rule, which would be equivalent to a 12 inch rule. And then he sent me a 600 millimeter rule, which is equivalent to a, a 24 inch rule. And uh, Patrick, I appreciate that, man. Like I said, I don't, uh, I don't uh, know why they're hard to find. And the ones you can find, they, they don't start the scale at the very end of the rule. So these are going to be a, a great help in the shop. Patrick, thank you, sir. I think I'm going to survive um, uh, regardless of what anybody else might think. I, I think we're going to be okay, buddy. Um, I'm just kidding, man. I was just poking fun at uh, Patrick. Uh, but anyway, in, in all sincereness, Patrick, thank you so much for the rules, man. They will, I will put them to good use, and uh, I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you. If you follow my channel, you know that I have a Burke number no. four milling machine, and uh, that I've started on, and it's kind of slow process, but I'm I'm slowly getting there. But I had mentioned that I didn't have any tooling for it, um, so. I was contacted by um, uh, a young man named Rowan, uh, who's a subscriber of the channel, and says, hey, I got two BS number nine uh, uh, adapters for you. He says, I got an ER32 collet, BS9, and an ER16 collet, BS9. And he says, uh, you know, if you want them, they're, uh, uh, they're there for you. He says, just pay the shipping. And I said, that would be awesome. And uh, but then talking to Rowan, I, uh, young master Rowan, I discovered that uh, we are something of neighbors. He lives about 70 miles from me. And he says, I tell you what, uh, dad and I just come up and visit. So I got to visit with Rowan and his dad. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, and I tell you what, Rowan, uh, if you're listening, buddy, uh, thank you so very much for these. Uh, I appreciate them. They'll get put to good use as soon as the machine is up and running. And uh, I just want to say something about Rowan. Rowan um, is a homeschool kid and one of the sharpest young people I've met in a long time. Uh, when we talk about machining, he's very, very knowledgeable and very, very thorough uh, and, and with a lot of attention to detail. So that's a, that's a great thing. Uh, so uh, to Rowan's dad, uh, brother, you've done a good job raising that child, so uh, congratulations. And Rowan, uh, thanks again for the ER32 BS9 collet chuck and the ER16 BS9 collet chuck. Like I said, I will 
put these to good use and, and I really appreciate it. So uh, Rowan, thank you, sir. Also, for those of you who are following the uh, Burke Mill build, uh, you know, we've done a, uh, done a collaboration with Richard from Making Something From Nothing and Chirpy uh, from Chirpy's Tinkerings. And when Chirpy sent the, uh, the gib back to me, uh, the one that he had made for the machine, he also sent along some cutters. Now, I showed these cutters once already, but uh, just as a point of interest, uh, Chirpy, I just want to thank you again for the cutters. I'll put them to good use. I need to make an arbor uh, for them, but I don't think that's going to be too big of a job. Um, but at least now I have something that I can start cutting with. So Chirpy, uh, thanks again, buddy, for, uh, for, the, for the cutters for uh, my Burke Mill. Um, you're a lifesaver, man. Thank you, sir. For those that are familiar with uh, Stephen Lang's channel, Shark River Machine, you know that he makes uh, these precision ground stones. And I figure, you know, starting in on the Burke, uh, there's probably, you know, the Burke and a whole bunch of uh, other places that, that these stones would come in handy. So I, I bought a pair and he sent along a sticker. So I'll stick that with uh, my other, uh, my uh, Emma's uh, spare room machine shop sticker. So I think pretty soon I'm gonna have to set up a board or something. But anyway, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with these, um, the stones are uh, precision ground and matched to each other. Uh, this is how they came. Uh, there's a coarse and a rough side. I mean, I'm sorry, a, a, a fine and a rough side, or a fine and a coarse side. And uh, if you're not familiar with the use of these, uh, Stephen's got a good video and show you on, on the use and care of these. But uh, they are uh, very flat and they are square. And uh, those are going to be a handy addition to uh, to the shop uh, to stone off burrs from the ways and some other stuff like that. So. Uh, Steven, great product. They come in great shape and quick shipping. I know that uh, you have a long uh, list on that. So if anybody's interested in uh, getting a, a set of these, uh, please watch uh, Steven's uh, last video. I think he's uh, he's got a pretty long waiting list and I think he uh, wants to hold up until, if, um, until he's worked some of that down before he takes more orders. Now this is February 7, 2019. So if you're watching this very much later, it might be best to just reach out to uh, to Stephen and see what he's got going on. So that's uh, that's a new addition to the shop. And uh, so let's uh, talk about a couple of other things that I've bought, and we'll be right back. So I'm learning the hard way that uh, there are just some tools that you really can't do without. And uh, for me, here lately, it's been hammers. Okay, so I did finally give me a smaller. Um, Ball peen hammer. This is a, a Vaughn um, eight ounce hammer. So I'm um, thinking when I go tapping stuff around, I'm not uh, not going to beat it to death like I do with my 16 ounce one. And I bought a soft face hammer so that um, you know, so when I make adjustments and stuff, I'm not marking things up. So I did get a couple more uh, hammers. So the hammer drawer uh, is uh, is uh, getting populated, I guess. So uh, being a new guy to uh, uh, home home shop stuff, this is a uh, been slow, slow acquiring, but uh, I tell you what, man, I'm uh, I'm having a ball, and I just want to thank all you guys for your support and uh, uh, you know your suggestions and stuff like that. So just just want to just want to say that. So in addition <clears throat> to the tools I bought, I've made a couple. Um, working on the uh, little Kenneth Well steam engine. I know I haven't put a video out in a while, but uh, I need to and. I've just been busy with other stuff. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have to put something in a four jaw chuck and you only have a punch mark to line it up. So you need an indicating bar. So I did make a little indicating bar here uh, with a center drill on one end and a 60, 60 degree cone on the other. So nothing super fancy, but I figure, you know, at least that way, you know, I can get the stuff centered in. And if you recall, I've done, uh, done a Banggood uh, review a while back and uh, for the for the ER32 Morse Taper 3 collet chuck, I had to make a draw bar. And uh, of course, one, one is M M12 for the other, and the other end is half 13. And I was just using a, uh, a nut and a washer to, with a you know, collar piece here to, to draw the bar in. And then you know, what I realized is that you know, it doesn't take a lot of pressure to really draw the bar in and seed it in. So um, I was talking to uh, Art Eckstein, Art, uh, you know, so I said I kind of like to have a handle that I can put a uh, 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 
a coupling nut in, right? Just epoxy the nut in or press fit it or whatever. And then that way, I think by hand, I can probably get the uh, drawbar tight enough um, in there without, um, you know, without, you know, it's just yeah, it's one less wrench I got to be messing with. Now, um, the first one he sent me was uh, for three quarter inch diameter nut, which that's what I thought, that's what I thought they were. And, and you see this, this nut fits in here pretty good. It's got just enough room to be epoxied in. And of course, uh, a coupling nut, you know, I would have to have to turn it and face it down a little bit. But then when I bought some coupling nuts, I discovered that they're much smaller, or at least the ones that I can get are. So anyway, um, Art was kind enough to uh, modify the model for me and send it to me. So I'm, I'm kind of waiting on my son, Zachary, uh, to print uh, a, a new handle for me so that I can uh, use this on my draw bar. And then there's a 3 8 variety that I can use on the uh, draw bar that I use for my uh, MT2 collets. So, got that. <clears throat> and then speaking of uh, my son Zachary and 3D printing, I don't know if uh, you guys are interested in this, but you know, as I get tools for the lathe and try to figure out where to put stuff and, and, and everything, I'm starting to sort of get a piled mess. So um, I found on Thingiverse a couple of, uh, uh, an AXA tool holder, right? So this is a plastic tool holder. It's got uh, four screws that uh, you can mount it to the wall or mount it to a surface. And then these are slightly angled to, to take your, your, um, your tool blocks, right? So um, this, uh, you can see, that's going to be pretty handy. I want to mount those on the wall and then, you know, when I get them all mounted, I'll, I'll uh, take you over there and take a look sometime. And then in addition, so, so far he's printed out uh, two of these for me, right? And I think I'm going to need three for now and then uh, later I'll uh, need another. Now I'll put a link to the Thingiverse um, files for this, but now th there's a sample piece that you can print and uh, I suggest that, uh, you know, depending on who makes your your tool blocks, um, your AXA blocks, uh, to, to try different um, scales, right? So it comes, there's a file, there's a test piece, so you can shrink this to, you know, 100% or 99%. So you'll want to print out one of these just to test your blocks, because I discovered that uh, not all these blocks are the same. You know, these Chinese-made blocks, uh, some of them fit great, and some of them were too tight, had to shrink it, and that sort of stuff. So just keep that in mind. I'll put a link to the Thingiverse um, files in the description below. So in addition to that, you know, I have some Morse taper stuff. Um, he printed out uh, five of these. These are pretty much the same thing. You know, you got a couple of screw holes here so that you can mount it to the wall. And then you, you could take your Morse to um, whatever, in this case is Live Center, and stick in there or, or tail, talk, tail stock chuck or whatever and uh, put, put it in there. Uh, uh, I'll put the links to this one to the uh, to this one from Thingiverse in the description below too. And um, I think uh, Zach's got uh, there's the same files there. I'll put a link to for a Morse Taper three. So these are kind of nice. And when I get these all attached to the wall, I'm thinking you know I'll finally have uh, you know at least a, a common place to go to to grab the tools and and just make organizing and workflow just maybe a little bit better. So, so that's it for this uh, update uh, video. Like I said, I've made a little progress. Uh, I've also bought some uh, lumber to start building a bench for the Burke mill because I need to get started on that. Uh, you know, probably a steel bench would be best, um, but I'm going to go ahead and make a wooden bench. Uh, probably do a double layer top uh, just so that I can get some weight to it and uh, laminate an uh, inch and a half stock for like three by three legs and that sort of stuff. So I want to be able to get some drawers in it and things like that. So, um, slow progress, uh, you know, because uh, work's been busy and stuff, but uh, that's what I got. So, hey, look, I want to thank uh, Patrick. Thank you, sir, uh, for, the, for the scales. I appreciate it, man. Uh, thank you to Chirpy for the cutters. Thank you to Young Master Rowan for the uh, ER32 and ER16 uh, collet chucks uh, with the BS9 uh, tapers for the mill. Uh, thank you, Art, for uh, the files for... Um, for the uh, uh, hand wheels. If anybody's interested in, in uh, the files for the hand wheel, let me know and I'll reach out to Art and maybe we can get him to post them to Thingiverse or, or 
share the file somehow. Uh, Zachary, thanks for uh, printing the plastic bics out to me. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Lang, uh, I love the stones. I think they're going to be a huge help in the shop. So hey, look, if these uh, videos are entertaining or helpful in any way, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. Um, other than that, have a blessed day.